Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And in today's video, I'm going to tackle a subject that has long perplexed the academic morons of the big stupid. And that subject concerns the derivative definition in the new calculus. So, in the new calculus, we have this definition for the derivative. Okay? Let me write it out. Right. Oops. That's plus n. So, what that means is that if you have a curve like that, and you have a tangent line here, like so, and a parallel secant, okay, then you can use a parallel secant to find the gradient of the tangent line. How do you do that? Well, if this is x, and this distance is m, and this distance, distance is n, then these points here will respectively be x plus n, f of x plus n, and x minus m, and f of x minus m. Shouldn't have put that bracket there, never mind. So, we can find the gradient of this parallel secant, and then know the slope of the tangent line, which is a derivative. Now, in a previous video, I had proved this, and I had shown you how you can prove this new derivative definition, and I'll do it over here. So I'll show you the definition, which says that if, if f is continuous and smooth, and tx is the equation of a tangent line to f of x, the slope or derivative is given by that. And the proof is simple. We just let tx be the tangent, then let a parallel secant line be given by that equation, and it follows that k must equal to that. But the derivative is equal to the slope k of the tangent line, because that's its definition. Therefore, we have the definition in place, and so we know that that definition is correct. Then, we can go ahead and use that definition. So say, for example, f of x is equal to x squared. We end up with f dash of x equal to 2x plus n minus m. <coughs> so now, I've had a lot of morons, um, for example, come and tell me that this can't be, this can't, this can't be equal to zero. Well, it has to be equal to zero, because if you look at the proof of this theorem here, unless k is equal to that, then it's not a parallel secant. And for that to be true, this part here must equal to zero. Does that make sense? Okay. So, do n and m have to equal to zero? Of course not. n and m never, <coughs> n equals to m never has to be zero. You, you may ask, well, how do you get rid of that expression? Very easy. You just take an n and n and m that suits any one of these parallel secants and put it in there. Right? So, n and m don't have to be zero. However, because m and n are horizontal distances from the point of tangency, it follows that at the point of tangency both m and n are zero. Of course, we never have to put n and m are zero in there, but it just follows from the geometrical definition of the derivative, which is what I've explained over here. So, another idiot is William Gelfand, who's created this blog here, okay? So, he says here, according to John Gabriel, according to John Gabriel, oops, let's go there, this is too sensitive, uh, let's just go back here, right, according to jo John Gabriel, m minus n is an auxiliary equation that must be set to zero, that way the slope of the secant line is parallel, he says he never explains why setting that equal to zero does this, but of course I do, I prove it here. I say that m plus n is a factor of the expression, right? It has to be a factor of that expression. And the proof is easy. k times that must equal to the expression. So it follows that 
if n plus n divides the left hand side exactly, it must also divide the right hand side exactly. Okay? So n plus n is a factor of this expression. And this means that if we divide f of x plus n minus f of x minus n by n plus n, the expression solved term must equal to k. But this is only possible if the sum of all the terms in n and n is zero. Okay? That means k to be equal to this slope here, k, must be uh, the situation that is given when qx of n, n is equal to zero. Otherwise, k is not equal to f dash of x. It's as simple as that. And of course, by the definition, it's easy to see it too, because we have tx, the tangent line equation, a tangent line equation, and s of x, the parallel secant line equation. So, neither n nor m have to be zero. They can be zero once you've simplified the difference quotient. What is the difference quotient? This. So once you've simplified this, m and n can be zero. They don't have to, though, because all that has to be zero is the sum of the terms in n and m. Now, in space, time, and the universe, there are three really idiotic people who have constantly attacked me on this point of view. And these individuals here just never seem to get it, just like this idiot never seemed to get it. And all of them are math graduates. Then on psi dot math, there are infinitely many morons, but the one really d disturbing me the most is someone called Conyberg. This individual simply can't grasp this concept. Now, come on, people. If you think that this definition is flawed, you need a new brain. In fact, stupid academics have been the bane of my existence. I've come across dumb people all the time. And I just have no more tolerance and no more patience for stupid people. Well, I hope that this video will once and for all clear up these facts because every now and again some green fellow or some arrogant fool comes up and tells me that this definition here is wrong and it doesn't work. Of course it works. It's very rigorous. And it's not like the bogus calculus where you have limits and a whole lot of junk that doesn't make sense whatsoever. Now, one of the things that is also constantly attacked is the fact that in the new calculus you cannot have a derivative at a point of inflection. It makes perfect sense. The bogus calculus, though, can sometimes have a derivative and sometimes not. Well, that's what happens when you use ill-formed concepts. You end up with something called the mainstream, the flawed mainstream calculus, which is bogus. While most of the, the results and theorems obtained from it are correct, the formulation of it is complete nonsense. Now, the new calculus is not just a reformulation. It is a new calculus, genuinely a new calculus with new uh, theorems and new features. For example, the auxiliary equation is not possible using the mainstream bogus calculus. Auxiliary. Okay? It's not possible using the bogus calculus. I challenge any of you morons to find me an auxiliary equation using Cauchy's definition. This garbage. Okay? I challenge you to find an auxiliary equation. You can't. Don't use Taylor series because Taylor series assumes the derivative is already in place. Some morons on Psi.net have already tried that. Well, I don't know who the next fool is going to be that comes up against me and asks silly questions. But what I'm telling you here is no longer debatable. It is fact. The new calculus is here to stay, and I suggest that if you're smart, you should start learning it. Don't waste time. Learn the new calculus. And get past the definition of the integral. I mean, of the derivative. Many people get stuck on the derivative and never even see the beauty of the new calculus integral. I hope this will motivate you to study the new calculus. My name is John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. Until next time, goodbye.